coral reefs. For more than 400 million years, corals have been building reefs in the Earth's ocean. Corals may look like plants, but they are actually animals. Some are soft and sway back and forth in the water, while others, called hard corals, are rigid. Corals are made up of polyps, and most have hundreds of tiny polyps on their surface. Each polyp has stinging tentacles that it can extend to catch food. The polyps of hard corals build a limestone skeleton and live in indentations or cups along its surface. When a polyp is in danger, it can retract into its cup for protection. Hard coral are able to build their skeletons because of a remarkable partnership that they have with a type of algae. The algae live inside the polyp and working together, the polyp and the algae build the coral skeleton. There are thousands of kinds of coral and each species has a different shape and color. Some have intricate branches while others grow in mounds on the ocean floor. When a coral's polyps die, they decay, but the skeleton remains and new corals can grow on top of it. Over hundreds of years, the coral piles up and spreads across the seafloor, eventually forming a living mountain called a coral reef. Corals may be small, but they are incredible builders. Coral reefs are the largest structures built by any animal on Earth. The Belize Barrier Reef is over 180 miles long. Coral reefs are homes to thousands of plants and animals. There are so many species living in reefs that they are often called the cities of the sea. These aquatic cities grow in tropical waters around the world. They start close to shore and extend out into the ocean. Different parts of the reef have different kinds of animals. All of these animals interact in a complex web of relationships and each has its own place in the system. Many of the relationships are between predator and prey. Coral eats plankton, tiny organisms that float through the water. The polyps use their tentacles to catch the plankton so they can eat it. But corals aren't just predators, they are also prey. Coral polyps retreat into their cups for protection, but that can't stop a parrotfish Parrotfish eat the algae that live inside the coral polyps. They use their special beaks to break through coral skeletons and gobble up the polyps inside. The chain doesn't stop there. Parrotfish are preyed on by larger fish, like groupers and sharks, a series of species that eat each other, like the coral, parrotfish, and sharks, is called a food chain. There are many different food chains on the reef, and all together, they make up the food web. Many species use the reef for protection. As the coral grows, it creates many cracks and crevices in the reef that make perfect hiding places for small fish. Squirrel fish use the reef for protection when predators like the Nassau grouper are on the prowl. In addition to evading predators, each species must also find food to survive. Moray eels have slender bodies that are perfectly adapted for navigating the narrow nooks and crannies of the reef. Hiding fish may be safe from groupers, but they still have to watch out for the hungry mores. The sandy area beneath the reef and the shores is called the lagoon, and it is covered by beds of seagrass. The lagoon plays an important role in keeping the reef healthy. Puffer fish and seahorses are common in the lagoon. Many young fish take shelter in the seagrass before growing up and moving on to the reef. Rays visit the lagoon to hunt for shrimp and snails, and sea turtles eat the seagrass itself. Beyond the lagoon, corals start to appear, marking the beginning of the reef. Groups of fish called schools can be found swimming over the reef. Fish swim in schools for protection, and sometimes different species, such as white grunts and porkfish, will swim together to make an even bigger group. By working together, Schooling fish have a better chance at survival. Many species have developed unusual adaptations that help them survive. 
The scorpion fish barely resembles a fish as it sits on the seafloor waiting to ambush its prey. Predators had better watch out too. On its back are spines filled with painful venom, an effective defense. The frogfish goes fishing for its dinner. It changes color to blend in with its surroundings and dangles a special fin in front of its mouth to lure its prey close. When an unsuspecting fish takes the bait, the frogfish attacks and it rarely misses. The frogfish is one of the quickest fish in the ocean. The common octopus has a few uncommon adaptations. It can change the color and texture of its skin to blend in with any environment. Being a master of disguise is perfect for hunting and hiding. If a predator does happen to find it, the octopus has a backup plan. It releases a cloud of ink that confuses its enemy. The scorpion fish, the frogfish, and the octopus are just a few of the many reef species with unique adaptations that aid in their survival. Sometimes different species work together to help each other survive. Many large predators like tiger groupers have a partnership with tiny fish called neon gobies. The groupers visit the gobies for a cleaning. The gobies swim all over their customers, picking parasites and dead skin off their scales, gills, and fins. The groupers even let the gobies swim inside their mouths to clean their teeth. This arrangement works out well for everyone. The gobies get a free meal and the groupers get cleaned. At the end of the reef, the coral drops off dramatically into the depths. This is the reef wall and beyond it is the open ocean. The tropical waters border reefs have very little life in them, making food scarce. Coral reefs, on the other hand, are like oases in the desert. They are teeming with life and provide feeding grounds for visitors. The largest fish in the world, the whale shark, visits the Belize Barrier reefs every spring to feed on the microscopic eggs of spawning reef fish. More than 4,000 kinds of fish and thousands of other species have been discovered in coral reefs more than in any other part of the ocean. But that's not all. Scientists believe that reefs are homes to millions of species that haven't been discovered yet. Remarkably, this enormous quantity of life is squeezed into just a fraction of the ocean. Coral reefs may be big, but they cover less than half a percent of the total ocean floor. With so many species living in such a small space, it's no wonder coral reefs are called cities of the sea. Like all cities, reefs are busy places and they are full of thousands of different relationships. Many of these relationships are between, are between predator and prey, while other partnerships are benef beneficial to everyone. All of these relationships make coral reefs some of the most complex ecosystems in the world. Each species has a place in the system and all of them depend on the reef builders for their home. The corals. Coral reefs 